So thanks for the invitation. I've been asked to present a case on difficult ASD closure. I had a moment of cognitive dissonance about a week and a half ago. I was doing an ASD case, which I thought was me straightforward, and it got very frustrating and very challenging. And I was kind of just really annoyed. But at the same time, I was really happy because I'm like, yes, I've got a great case for next week to present. So thank you very much. So, and this sort of the, the, the underlying subject is the deficient aortic rim and, and challenges with Austin Secundum ASD closures in these settings. So the, cal- the challenge from a technical, practical perspective is the angle of delivery of the discs in relationship to the interatrial septum. So you see on the left side here, <clears throat> on the left, left panel, I have my, let's get my mouse. No, no, it's not working. So, and there's no laser, I guess. But um, on the left side, you see the arrows pointing towards the interatrial septum. You see the left atrial disc open, and as you pull that back, it will just slide through because the angles are not right. I'm, I'm parallel to the septum, not orthogonal to the septum. And you see in the same case, as I pulled back and then deployed the right disc, that clearly I've fallen to the right side. Okay, and this was actually TEE guided in this particular case. So the basic fundamental concept to overcome this, which works nine out of 10 times is just to aggressively clock the delivery sheath so that that brings the left atrial disc orthogonal to the septum. And a good rule of thumb um, on x-ray, on fluoro, is when the sheath is parallel to the spine in the straight AP projection. So you see how this is the, the normal conformation of the delivery sheath, just a standard torque view, 45 degree sheath. I've clocked it like crazy. And now my sheath is straight up and down. And you can see what that looks like on here. This is on, um, uh, on, on Echo here. My le- again, TEE, I got, yeah, TEE. I have my left disc here. Now I'm clearly coming in right. So I'm gonna catch the aortic bulb right here and I will not slip through. And then you, get a re- and then you can see here, as you pull it back, you can catch that um, aorta really nicely and have a great result. So here's the case, it's a 54-year-old male with an ASD, deficient aortic rim, right-sided enlargement with a a significant shunt. You can see um, the 2D and 3D views, pretty floppy septum. Um, uh, The septum premium is is floppy. There is a deficient aortic rim, fairly circular on 3D echo. In terms of defect size, so the rest, the, the largest resting defect diameter on 2D echo was about 19 millimeters. I did multi-planar reconstruction as well. I I don't have that. I can tell you it was about 21 to 22 millimeters. I actually don't balloon size my ASDs, especially with this kind of uh, ASD, you can make it bigger and bigger. We talk about stop flow, really actually hard to do um, in the sense of you'll still often get flow uh, as you continue to go up with a floppy septum. So my plan here was it's about 22, Floppy septum, deficient rim, I'll upsize and use a 26 millimeter device. So I'm doing this by intracardiac echo. And you see this is with, I went off the bat clockwise rotation. You can see, you can see how good I am. I'm straight up and down on the floral, right? Just how I want to be. And it just falls right through. And so a couple of things. Number one is I'm still not quite orthogonal to the septum. Number two is it's very floppy, isn't it? You can see I'm pushing the septum all the way out here. So um, clockwise rotation doesn't work. I used to use an SL2 sheath in this scenario. SL2s were terrific. It kind of brings you around orthogonal to the septum. St. Jude, now Abbott, no longer makes the SL2 um, sheath. They think it was an EP sheath. I told them, no, it's actually a structural heart sheath. Um, so and they had a 10 French SL2. Bayless, I just realized after this case, duh, because I saw it on my, on my um, shelf, Bayless makes an SL2 equivalent. It's there, I guess, I forget what degrees it is. Maybe it's a 35 degree sheath, but they only make it an eight and a half French size. So that would not suffice, suffice for this big occluder. So there's this Hausdorff sheath, which again, you can see the, the, in, the inset here. This is what, it has this extra angle to it. It, may, it, it brings you, it does what, it, what clockwise rotation does for you on its own. Also has another little angle to it. It hardly ever actually works. 
but it's easy. <laughs> but it's really easy to say, well, let me just try the house door if maybe it'll work. And you can see here, it does bring it. I'm not clo I, I'm actually clocking as well, but again, let's see here. I'm pulling it back and you can see it just falls right through. No go. So what's next? So what's next is do you tell your fellow it's July? I got a great idea. This is going to work great. So um, is to use a catheter to actually prop your left atrial disc up to push it uh, orthogonal to the septum. So here, I, I don't usually use sizing balloons to size the uh, ASD, but I guess I use sizing balloons to close the ASD. So here I've just advanced your standard, what used to be NMT, I guess it's now brawn sizing balloon. I guess this is a 20 or 25 millimeter sizing balloon. I have, uh, I got second uh, venous access. I cross the, the ASD, put my wire in the pulmonary vein, advanced over that wire, the sizing balloon, so that it straddles the interatrial septum. You can actually see right here is where the ASD is. And I inflate it just a low pressure, just to push that um, disc up. You can see, let's see if we can see it on the, um, on the echo here. You can't quite, you'll, there'll be some better images, but it's, it's there, there's the release and it came out great. It, it looks like it came out great. Oop, let me go back, sorry. So here's the actual deployment. You can see how it kept that left disc from falling. And this is it by echo. You can see how it's now really close to the aorta, and we, we caught the, the aorta. So you're essentially pushing it onto the aorta. Push, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You're pushing it, and you're, 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 you're shifting the, disc, the discs of the device. And this is the result. It looks terrific, right? Perfect. So then I do a tug test. Oh, it falls out. <laughs> okay, well, hey, I, I've done this game before, so now I just went with a 30. And this is actually a, a, a nicer image. You can see on the, the ice how beautifully you have the balloon across, pushing the left disc away from the aortic rim. You appreciate that? And <clears throat> so here's the deployment. Now I really wedge that balloon in there, don't I? And here's the echo deployment. And then you just pull the wire and the, or the balloon and then the wire. Here's a, a, a really good tug test. I'm pulling, pulling. It's not going anywhere. Push and pull. And this is the final released result, which is perfect. Not oversized, flat, even not that much interaction with the aorta. So take on points for deficient aortic rims, aggressive clockwise rotation of the delivery sheath, consider alternately shaped sheaths. If you have a smaller device, perhaps the Bayless SL2 imitation sheath, sizing balloon at the same time, and obviously an appropriately sized occluder. And just a pitch, Paul comes, um, is one of my key faculty for my February course here at Scripps in La Jolla. Come to La Jolla in February, it's a nice place to be. Um, and we do a, a, a lot of a multidisciplinary interventions and imaging. Thank you very much. Um, that's fantastic. Matthew, what about like a, an Agilis? Would a steerable sheath, you know, comes in 11 French, could you use an Agilis to steer and make yourself more coaxial with the uh, atrial septum? Would that be reasonable? Yeah, I think that'd be great. But again, the challenge is the size of the Agilis, which I think is not being Goes to 11, they have 11 French, you know, yeah. So now I have to order some 11 French Agilis sheets yeah. for my lab. They're just but really I think expensive. That's, They're yeah. $1,100 each. $1,100. Yeah, which is the issue. Yeah, so that, that is expensive. <laughs> But I'm already, I'm already off the cost curve, so I guess that's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.